Welcome everybody to Workshop Studios. <laughs> Today's project is a little different. This is a uh, an old family heirloom that was in my grandmother's home um, and she says that her her grandfather, we'll call it that, so my great-great-grandfather would be uh, had uh, found this or somebody he knew found this uh, in the Salinas Valley as they were digging up something. But I um, thought we'd take a look at it today and see if we can't figure out a little bit more about it. So looking on the, uh, the old interweb out there, it looks like it's a um, Allen and Hopkins, I think is what it, that the manufacturer was. Um, and it's a 38, that's the caliber of the barrel. Uh, and it's, it's, um, it was thought to be, they, they thought at the time that they found it, they thought that this might have been used as part of the Mexican American war, uh, in that area by a general Fremont, uh, and his men, uh, and that there was a skirmish in the, uh, near the Salinas Valley where they may have lost this. I'm not so sure about that. It looks like this gun may have been manufactured a little later than that time more like in the uh, 1880s. Uh, that battle was in the 1860s. So not so sure about the history of it, but uh, interesting nonetheless. So let's see if we can't make out uh, what's going on here because this is where the manufacturer apparently put their name. So we'll see if we can clean this area up enough to read something off of there. So the first thing I thought I'd try is just um, some crud cutter that's a rust remover. Um, and a steel brush and see what happens. So let's give it a try here. So we're going to just put, it's right up here that we're interested in it. Let me get a rag here first. Okay, so let's put a little on here. Let's see if anything happens. Well, I'll bring you back when I find out what happened. All right, so I've put a little on the top here, and it says it may take about 30 minutes for that to um, take off that rust. So we'll just leave it here, and we'll come back and see what it looks like. Well, it's a bubbling away. That's been about 30 minutes, but I think I will leave it a little longer. All right, let's see if we can see anything now. And probably almost an hour. So we'll get some of this off of here. Yep, we're getting down to bare steel. Let's try a little wire brush action. Mm-hmm. Starting to see something there. Let me uh, work on a little more here. All right, you can begin to see some writing. So you can see a couple of letters there. Hopefully you can too. See if I can zoom in without it going out of focus. Yep, there's, it looks like, well, I'm not quite sure what that says yet, but I've got another batch of, um, on there that will help us to get through that rust. Well, there's treatment number three, and it's still not quite readable. I would say we have a an L, a B, and an A. But I've got some more on there. We'll see if we can't get that cleaned up. Almost looks like a 1900 something down here below, down in here, but I can't quite tell what that is saying right now. 
Well, a little more scrubbing. You can see it's starting to come off. I'm thinking it might be nice to get that screw out of there if we can. And we might try to get these handles off. But I would like to free the, the um, barrel part of it up if I could. And I believe that this rotates and opens and closes it so that you can slide the pin out when you have it this way. But the pin, I believe, is broken off in there. Kind of just see down in there. So it might be tricky but to get that out of there, but that would be nice too. Well, we'll keep working on it. I soaked it overnight in penetrating oil to see if that might loosen things up, but it's still pretty stuck. And um, it hasn't really made this all that much more readable, but uh, the more I've done research, um, the more I can see probably what's written here. So I'll put a, a link, I'll hold this down here. I'll put a link up here um, at the top with a picture of this, but I think we can see it here. Is up top here, it's going to say Hopkins and Allen right across here. That's There's some lettering there. You can barely make it out. And then this will say XL. And then this is an N number, and there should be a four right there. I can almost make it out. There's a four, number four. And then over here, which is completely gone, it should say NY. Down here, it probably says patent. I thought it said San Francisco or something, but I think it says patent. Um, and then there's a patent number down here, but it's still pretty hard to make out. Anyhow, you'll see what it's supposed to look like up here in it. It's pretty close to it. So this is a Hopkins and Allen XL number four rim shot. That's pretty much what we've come to on this one. Um, and again, I let me show you some pictures. Let me get this back in focus. I'll show you some pictures of this, um, ones that are in good shape. So I'll put those right now. So I'm kind of curious if I can get this screw out of here. Um, I don't know if it's got enough, you know, if I've soaked it long enough to be able to get it out of there, but I might try that. The other one is that you could see by those previous pictures that there should be a, um, uh, in essence, the part that pulls this out so that this, this will release and, and the, um, the barrel where the bullets go into uh, will come out of the, the gun. But this is broken off in here inside here and I've soaked it with um, the um, uh, penetrating oil but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. The other thing that looks like it's available is this should have been a screw on this side right in here and I don't know that the, I, that looks like it might have been broken off as well. So um, I may work on getting this handle off of here see if I can do that clean that up a little bit. All right, so I worked on that screw quite a bit with a little bit of heat on the rest of the gun and some more penetrating oil, and I think I finally got it off of there. So let's see if this the handle will come off. This will be the first time it's come off in a very long time. <laughs> yeah, so far, so good. It looks like it might come off of there. This side, at least. Okay. And this side looks like it's going to come off too. Looks like there's a pin here that needs to come off of there. There we go. Okay, there's the handle off. Well, let's see what those threads look like.
I'm not sure there are any threads left there, but we'll work on it. See if there's anything. Well, there are threads there still. You can see them. And I was trying to get this other little um, cap off of here, but there was a lot of rust in the way, so I used a uh, file to kind of knock it down in that little area up and now get the cap off so now there's the screw I'll clean that up some more too but there are some threads left there hooray all right so we've uh, actually freed up the the barrel a bit now so it's starting to rotate and did that by tapping on this mechanism right here it it goes in and out See if I can do it here while you're watching. So this goes down and it engages in one of these slots. Oh, there it is right there. Engages one of those slots and holds the barrel still while the, the uh, mechanism fires. So I just went back and forth tapping it like this. Put a little WD-40 on it. So put a screwdriver on there and just tapped it until it started to move see it there moving so now it's up all the way see how that's up and now the barrel will revolve now there's a couple of spots on here that have a lot of rust and they hit so I'm going to clean those up right now and then that should spin all the way around all right so that rust I just scraped it off with a utility knife one of those guys and for the first time in <laughs> lots and lots of years Let's say maybe 200 years, that's spinning around. So, that's a, the next step in getting that loosened up. And if I can clean these little spots up, then this will go in and out as the handle. So if I click this back, I'm sure what's supposed to happen is that this, this engages in the barrel. Closes down, I should say. That should move and then this holds the barrel still until you shoot and then it'll go to the next one it was called a single shot i don't think that it actually had a way to advance you had to do it manually i think some of you out there who know guns making maybe you can tell me more about that um, i've been working on trying to get this screw over here to come off but it isn't budging yet so i may soak it again tonight but that's a huge step. That's great. I'm glad that's freed up now. At least that spins around. And this is a little better now. It seems to want to um, work every time I pull it back. So it's kind of loosening up. Anyhow, we'll keep working on it. By the way, for those of you who don't know, this, this piece of metal here is the spring that makes this uh, come back in. So if you watch this one, you'll see it move as I pull the trigger back. Do you see that? Pull the trigger back and that moves because it's pushing down on that piece of metal, this piece of metal. So luckily that spring steel is still intact. Figured that might have been rusted out completely. but And I'd show you in, in here, but it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of dark down there. So, anyhow, there we go. So I'm going to use a brass wheel on this, and you can see already that it polished it up nicely. But I need to get, I need to get in there and see if I can clean up some of this stuff. So I'm just going to go over the whole gun like this and get some of this junk off of it. Anyhow, it's kind of hard to show you. <clears throat> well, I've tried getting that screw out of there a bunch of different ways, and I just can't. And I would like to take this apart, so I think I'm going to drill that out. Hate to do that, but there you go. So I'll go ahead and do that now. <laughs>
got that drilled out. I think I'm going to try to separate the gun now. See if I can get these parts off of here. All right, so these two pieces came out. There's a little spring there, and this one that was in the handle here came out. And we've got this moving. Let's see if we can get the rest of the way out now. There we go. And here it comes. Yep, there's that little spring there. Looks like this one broke off. Maybe a broke off of here. So we've got a couple of things going on here. Good. So we have the trigger mechanism. Should be able to come out of there now. First I want to get this off of here. go so that came off the trigger should oh, there we go lift off there we go and this one should just lift off of here as well there we go and now we have the rest of this barrel mechanism that we want to work on so let me look at that and I'll get this screw out of here too all right, well that's everything out of there. Now the last thing I want to do is try and get this, the uh, revolver part out of it. And uh, there's two ways I can do it. This shaft is broken off inside here, and this is welded, if you <laughs> rusted solid here. This, this should pull out of there, and then this whole thing will fall out. And that's how they loaded the bullets in, as best I can tell. So you have to pull this out, put the bullets in, put it back in, and then um, put that shaft back in. But because the shaft is, is seems to be welded s solid here, I'm either going to have to break it free, or I'm going to have to drill it out this way, or cut it off there. But even then, I can see there's a problem because it, it has um, a connection back here. The easiest way would be to get it out um, of this. I'm All right, so I was... Uh, attempting to um, drill this out and it caught on the barrel and pulled it up. So I think we can get this out of here now. Hooray! All right, well, I've been at it here for a while. Um, I went ahead and, and did a lot more kind of research on it to try and understand what was going on. But, so the barrel, uh, sorry, the cartridge, I've learned now that this is called the cartridge. This is the barrel, obviously. You know, slides in there. And the shaft that I had, get that out here. This is the shaft that was in there. And I had to drill it to try and get it out of there, which it, it did finally. And I've cleaned this all up. <clears throat> Still a little crusty. I can feel it in there, but at least it spins nicely on there now. And I don't dare put this one in because I have no way of getting it back out. So what I've done is come up with uh, another makeshift shaft, an old screwdriver that just happened to be the right diameter. So this goes back in there only one way because there's a slot right there. And then this can go in here. And now we have the barrel spins. Isn't that nice? And it does index. Apparently that's the term. This is this little see if it, there we go now I can see it this little guy here doesn't look like much from out here but there's a little um, you can see it through the light there right down there and it fits into these slots here so it's supposed to index in there and there we go so now it's locked in and that keeps the bullet in line with the barrel and the trigger or the hammer I should say all right, so, and I've learned a lot about how this mechanism works in here, trying to get all these springs back into place. This is the trigger mechanism down here. And um, there's also an, an advance mechanism that goes up in here and pushes on 
the cartridge when you go ahead and pull the trigger. So it's a single action, which means you can't pull this and it pulls the hammer back. You have to actually pull the hammer back with your thumb. There's one click and there's two clicks right there. Okay. Now that's not indexed at this point because there's a spring that needs to hold that. There's a spring that goes up in here. Spring that holds that so that it indexes. There we go. And then when you pull the trigger, down comes the hammer and kablangy, out comes the bullet. So, yeah, that's a technical term, by the way, kablangy. And then this little, it's a very interesting little mechanism right here. Get the light on it so you can see it. Move this light in a little closer. Maybe it'll get easier to see. There's a little hinge, very clever little hinge right there that hooks onto this big spring. And you'll see it move when I pull the trigger or the, yeah, trigger back. And there's the first index. So this little, it's just, it's just a little rectangle of steel rotates around and holds onto that spring. I'll do it again here. Now it's right there at this limit. I had to work on this spring a bit to bend it so that it wouldn't slip off of there. Um, so I've been working on that as well. This, I believe, adjusts the trigger tension, which is going to be both for comfort, because pulling it back is pretty hard, but it also, you have to put enough pressure on the uh, firing cap, I guess, in the bullet to make it fire, so you probably have to adjust it right there, and it, what it does is it pushes on this spring and just makes it a little bit tighter. So, um, there's also another mechanism in here that I am still working on. I'm trying to get this straight. This is the little arm that goes up and advances the cartridge. Come on, get on in there, you. He fits in there. Like that. There we go. And you can see he's down in this slot here. He's not right now because he's hanging up. There we go. Now he's down in that slot. And the, the idea is this little arm pushes on the cartridge when you've pulled it back, and it pushes it up so that it indexes appropriately um, so that that cartridge doesn't rotate around. It pushes it up. There's a spring that holds it in place. You pull the trigger, and... This, this is going to have a spring on it, by the way, I've got another spring, that allows the, this to drop down here, the cartridge to rotate around and index to the next bullet. It's supposed to do that. There we go. And then this would come around having done that. Now, everything in here is so worn out. You can see how this is down here. Everything in here is so worn out that I doubt I'll ever get this mechanism working correctly. And some of the really pristine ones that I've seen online, I'll put some links up here to those videos, where people have really um, well-preserved versions of this same gun. Even they are having trouble getting this to index, so they have to kind of manually adjust the barrel. And that goes with some of the things I've read about this manufacturer, that they weren't necessarily the highest quality gun out there. Um, good, but not great. So, you know, having been not a great gun, and also being stuck underground for probably 10 years and rusted out like it is, um, getting that working is going to be a challenge. But at least most of the parts are here, and everything seems to be moving now. Um, and so it may be getting close to putting it back together. Now you can see here, I've actually got some of the original um, nickel plating on there. It's kind of amazing that some of it survived down in here. I suppose that was away from the, the dirt. But you can see all the trigger mechanism is fully pitted by having been buried for that length of time. Um, the other thing I found is that there's, I, I couldn't find any videos uh, either on YouTube or um, any diagrams of this gun and people claim that the manufacturer, uh, their, all of their schematics were burned up when they had a fire in their warehouse and so there's really nothing out there to show you how to take this gun apart and put it back together. Um, parts are scarce out there so trying to rebuild a gun like this would be very difficult it looks like. Um, so I'll do what I, I can with the parts I have 
and see if I can't get it to be, you know, mostly working. Do you see how that arm advances like that when I pull the trigger back? And the idea is that pushes the cartridge around so that it's now um, at the right place for the bullet to, there we go, to uh, be in, in line with it. But I, I need to get, there's a spring down here, like I say, that I need to, to work on that uh, will hold that into place. So um, I will keep showing you how I'm making progress. I'll have to take this apart and put it together probably about 300 more times before I get it. Um, by the way, this little guy down here, this is meant to be a, um, a latch so that this pin doesn't come out of here until you want it to. Because every time you reload this gun, you have to take the cartridge out. So I've shot my last shot. Now I have to push this, this lever down. Let's see if you can see it there. Push this lever this way. It allows the shaft to come out, the barrel to come out, and then you can put your bullets in here. Um, it turns out that this gun is sort of, <laughs> if you want to think of the evolution of guns, is that this was pretty revolutionary. Uh, the ideas that were in this gun were revolutionary at the time, although there were a lot of gun manufacturers making them, and I'll put some pictures up to show you all the different ones that were coming out. Um, I'll put a picture here, so I'll stop for a second. Okay, good. Now you can see what I've done um, uh, all the different guns that are out there that are like this. But the idea that you've got this um, bullet that can go in here was the big the big uh, uh, invention was a pre-made bullet as opposed to a musket type of a gun where you put the, the lead bullet in and all the, the black powder. So these guns were relatively new, if you might, new technology at the time. Um, and so all of this stuff is, is just happening really rapidly during this time period, which was about the 1860s uh, to the 1900s. And then by 19, I think it's 20, there's a gun that's invented that is still kind of a very popular one today, a, a 38 handgun that um, seems to incorporate everything. It's not like this at all. It's the uh, magazine-loaded type of a gun. I'll I'll put you a picture here of that one as well. So we're making progress. Um, I, I am certainly no gunsmith. That's certain. I'm, I, you can probably tell from everything I'm doing here. Uh, and I'm sure that if a gunsmith out there is watching this, he'll be horrified at what I'm doing. Um, but I'm kind of trying to do the best I can with a weapon that was you know, a revolver that was uh, pretty badly beat up by the by the elements. Okay. Enough on that, and we'll get back to fixing it up. By the way, to preserve this um, shaft that broke off or whatever, I'm going to drill that out further and tap it and see if I can't get a an extension that I can screw onto this thing so that it, it preserves this original shaft. I'd like to do that if I can. So I'll work on that to get that. Uh, so that it, you can see now that when you put it in here, it only sticks out about that far, which is just far enough for it to to um, hold it into place here, but you can't get it out. So I'll work on that one too and show you how I'm doing on that. All right, so here's the tricky bit. I think we've got this figured out pretty well, and I think we have this spring somewhat figured out, and that goes there. But the problem I come into now is the whole trigger assembly. And what has to happen, <clears throat> I may have mentioned this before, is this needs to be up and indexed when it's going to shoot. Meaning it needs to be held down when it's in the shooting position. But once it's shot, then the idea is that this will drop down and the barrel will spin over and then this will re-index on the next bullet. So the problem I have is that there are no schematics online. There's nobody that's taken one of these guns apart online. I haven't seen anybody who's shown this part of the gun. It's always been assembled. So I don't know if there are parts missing or what. So I'm going to be guessing at this point. So I have this little spring, which I think will go in here. I've seen something similar online. Um, it's something like a cartridge 
uh, indexing spring or something like that. But it's not, it's not complete. I think there's something broken off of it. So that one we have to work on. And then the trigger mechanism, I'll show you what, what's going on there. So I'm guessing that the trigger mechanism has to, to be um, hooked to a spring like this. So the spring would be, let's see if you can see that, the spring would be inside this, uh, pushing this either up or down. I'm going to guess that it's going to be pushing it up because down is only there while the cartridge spins and indexes. So this is the cartridge, remember, and it spins to the next slot and then indexes so that you can shoot the next bullet. So somehow this trigger is going to be um, pushing. When you pull the trigger and it, and it fires, it's going to push this down, but then something's going to push the trigger back so that this will then get pushed up again. So down, index, back up again. So that part, I don't have any schematics or parts diagrams or even uh, replacement parts to even give me a clue. So here's my guess. I've got one spring up here, and the one that we're missing is something here pushing the trigger up. Because the other thing that has to happen is when we go to cock it like that, the trigger needs to come out. Right now, I'm doing it manually. So if I do this, the trigger doesn't move. So I'm pulling it out here manually. So I'm guessing <clears throat> that there's some kind of a leaf spring or something that pushes the trigger out. So that when we go to fire, it's going to push on that spring. Like, oops, that one doesn't want to. That's just in the cocked position. There we go. So when I push it, it comes around and then it'll push the trigger back ready to catch on these. So I'm not sure exactly what this is called, this first one, but it, you can't shoot from there. It's just like pre-cocked or something. I, there's probably something about that. <clears throat> so I have, I'm have. i pretty sure I have something missing here to push the spring out so that it will. you don't have to hold it with your finger. And then this spring over here that is going to work on that one. So let me do some reconnoitering and thinking about that and see if I can come up with a way to do that. Now I'm guessing the spring will come into this notched part here because I would say clearly that's notched for a reason so I wouldn't be surprised if it's a piece of spring steel that goes down around and up like this that basically pushes the trigger out and when you when you pull the trigger in do it again here when you pull the trigger in this piece of st uh, sp <laughs> spring steel is going to then compress the spring so it's pushing out pushing out this way. So when you pull it, it's going to compress the spring, boink, and it'll push it back out again. I don't think it needs much tension. It's just a little bit to keep it out there because you don't want that trigger to be too hard to pull. So I'm going to work on that. I may have to make something for that and see if I can bend some spring steel into the right shape. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Um, by the way, I, I see that the uh, gun manufacturers tended to favor spring steel over regular springs. Uh, and I'm guessing it's because when you put it together, they don't, springs have a tendency to pop out unless you're screwing them down to something. So right here, that spring, if there was a spring pushing out, like a regular coiled spring, it would have a tendency to slide down and move around, whereas a piece of string, spring steel would stay intact once you, you uh, screwed the thing together, you reassembled it. So that's my thinking on that one. And of course, anybody out there who's had some experience with these guns, I'd love to hear from you. Now there is one other thing, and I mentioned it before, and that is that I think this is a threaded barrel. I've seen some parts online that hint that this barrel will unthread. And if I can do this, let's see if I can actually get it so that you can see that there are, it looks like some threads in there. You can maybe see it just barely. It looks like there's threads there. So there's one other thing is that some of the parts I've seen online um, looks like this barrel will unthread. So this will unthread from this part. And it looks like there are a few threads there. You can Maybe you can see them in this. Hopefully you can. 
Um, and so I might work on getting that unthreaded, but that's not really required and I don't want to damage it any further. So we'll see where we go with that one. So this is heating it up. I'm not very Well, after lots and lots of gentle tapping and uh, persuasion and heating it up several times, we've finally broken it free. Let's see if I can do this for you here. This goes over here. Turns out it does fit metric. That's actually a, a 14 um, millimeter metric on that barrel. So there we go. So I've already had it unscrewed most of the way, but I'll just take it out here for you. And we've gotten this apart for the first time in many years. Well, threads look pretty good in there, don't they? This side's a little bit needs a little bit of work. Got a couple little rough spots in there, but. There we go. Okay, so that's the barrel out. You can see where the end of the barrel was sticking out here and probably was exposed to the elements. It's got a little crustiness there. It really does thread in very nicely right now. I just cleaned it up with a wire wheel. But uh, most of those threads look pretty good. Right there, it's just a little messed up. Right here. Might do a little bit of light filing on that just to get that cleaned up. I'd like to see if I can get this pin out that holds this uh, little the uh, uh, cartridge uh, indexing uh, item. So if I can get that pin out, then I can get this out, and maybe we can uh, design that spring a little easier that way. So that one and this one down here it would be nice to get this out too. There's a screw here can't see it. it's a little grubby but a screw there and that that's for this um, the cartridge lock system all right so that pin is moving <clears throat> so we've broken it free Let's see if we can drive it out the rest of the way here I don't know if this this may be too big to <clears throat> go down the hole there yeah, doing pretty good See if we can uh, grab it on this side and pull it out. I think we're making progress. I'm going to work on that a little bit more and I'll come back to you. All right. I think we've got it. There it is. There's that pin out. Now let's see if we can get the this little guy out of here. There we go. Good. I think we can do a better job of designing the spring with that out of there now. Okay, so here's the next phase. I've sort of repaired this, the uh, cartridge pin, and it actually works. So if I have this up there, this pin won't come out. If I pull it down, then I can slip the pin out, and out comes the cartridge. There we go. So what I did was this. Hopefully you can see it. Get the light over here. Is I threaded this one and an extension. This was that little screwdriver that I had that I was using as kind of a makeshift pin. So I threaded this end and I just hooked them together there. And what's happening is that this lever, this one here, when I push it down, it actually hooks um, right in here on this, uh, this part of the pin. So it keeps it from coming out. So it worked out really nicely. So it 
won't go in there like that. Get that has to go back there and engage on that. And then when I lock this down, it now it won't come out of there. Oop, well, I pushed it down there right there, but okay. So when I've got this pushed in, then I can't get this out, which is the way it was originally built, so that this was a lock to keep the cartridge in. Now my guess is this had a spring underneath it that kept it that way, so there was some sort of spring underneath here, so that you had to push it and that would it would click shut again. So I may have to look into that, see if there's some way to get a, a spring to, it down in there that I would do that. So. That's that part. It's not the prettiest repair job, but uh, it'll it'll work for now. So put it back together here. So it goes in there. This goes in here. Give it a little bit of a rotate. Get it. Come on, baby. Guess this is why people cleaned their guns so you could slide things in and out. Well, there we go. Now it's <laughs> okay, we lock that in and this is now Yeah, it's still a little I've got a little sanding to do to get it a little more crud off of it, but it should spin pretty freely when I get it all done. Not too bad now. Okay, on to the next project. All right, so here's that little cartridge latch. That, that's the indexing pin right there. And you can see the remnants of the spring that's in here right there. That'll help me to understand how to design this thing. I suspect that that little piece that we had, which I will bring over here in just a minute. All right, so here's the little uh, cartridge latch. And this part over here is what indexes into the cartridge itself. You, you saw what I was doing there when I was spinning it around. And hopefully you can see that there is um, a remnant of spring. Let me see if I can get the light right on it. There we go. It's easier to see there. So this is a remnant of the spring that's in there. And this little piece, I'm guessing, was hooked on there. Right in there like that. So that gives me a sense of how to build a replacement spring so that we can get the uh, this mechanism working correctly. So it, it does help to have the thing out of there. Oops. There we go. You can see that there's the, the spring that we have in there. So I'm going to clean this up and I'll show you the little pieces as we get them out of there. So I'm guessing, now that these are two pieces here, so I've got that little piece out. This is the other broken bit. I'm guessing that this spring oops, looked something like that. So I'm going to use some spring steel and see if I can't fashion something like that. So the first material I want to try is an old tape measure. It's spring steel, but it's pretty light. I don't know if it's going to have enough spring to it. This, this material is a lot heavier. So, well, But we'll try it out first and see if it's got just enough spring. It's certainly easily enough trimmed, so we'll see if we can't uh, fashion something like that. All right, well, I think that spring will do it. I've got it in there, so you can see it working. So this little lever drops down when I do that, and it pops back up, and you can see it's indexed there. Down, up, down, up. And I ended up not using the, um, the uh, tape measure. It was just too flimsy. So I ended up using um, one of these paper clip things. That steel was just about strong enough. So I think this is the right action on it. I'm not sure. <laughs> but it looks like if you look down in there where that spring is, the spring is right here. It's a little hard to see, but it's on that notch there on the trigger. And so when the trigger comes up like this, it actually pushes that spring up. And that helps to do that. And when it comes back down, it comes down like that. Now I guess that uh, this was not like the old um, double actions where you pull the trigger and it advances the cartridge around automatically. 
um, this was a fairly inexpensive gun, so I suspect that what happened was when you the trigger came back like this, the the uh, the cartridge would revolve around, and you just get it close to where the next bullet is, and then you start to cock it, and you go half, to, you do the full cock, and it locks it into position. And then when you pull the trigger, it, it's now gone. But I'm going to do some more checking on it, but I think that's how that works. So I have um, uh, another set of springs to figure out here yet to make sure that everything's working correctly. There's um, this spring here that was in there that I haven't quite figured out what its role is. So I'm going to look into that in just a little bit here. Well, I got... Uh, the trigger part figured out. I'll show you how it good clicks. And now we're ready and hey, hey hooray. And I <laughs> did a lot of thinking on this one, but it turns out to be simple. There's just a little spring right there. Right here. Can you see it? Get it in the light here. There you go. Now you can see it. A little spring right there. I'll come in it. Click, click, and there we go. So, simple fix on this one. I just had to find a spring that would fit into that space because when the handle or the this cover goes on there, it has to fit over the top of that. And it needed to be about the right strength. Luckily, I had one in my hoard. So I had a, 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 um, a spring that was just perfect. So on to the next spring. There's two more things I need to figure out. One, this one, I didn't get this right. And I'll show you why. Is It, it really needs to be indexed here. There we go. So it needs to be indexed there. And then as this comes down, I'll take this off. As this, as the hammer comes down, it's the trigger mechanism will push over here and open this up briefly. And then this little arm will push on the cartri cartridge. So theoretically, pull the trigger. It opens this momentarily just as this pushes on the cartridge and it should spin to the next um, indexing spot and be ready to shoot again, theoretically. So I'll show you. So this little guy needs a spring, which I have. And this one, I need to get the spring so that it will keep tension on this all the time. So it, what I want it to do is stay there because the only time it'll open up is when this comes down and hits it, I think. So I'm gonna be working on that, those two springs. Well, after a great deal of, of fiddling around, um, I've decided to go with the, this spring, but not spring load. This uh, is that it locks this cartridge in place, and I can't seem to get the mechanism to, to open it up again. So better to leave it loose, and then I can manually open and close it uh, just because it is. Second thing is this spring here, which act, um, pushes this down. And this is the one that advances the cartridge as you pull the trigger back. I'll show you what it looks like here. So I need to make sure I don't lose any springs while I'm doing it. Now see how, how it won't go any further until I get that. There we go. This little arm wanted to push up into there, and it needs to be in one of those notches. So um, this this will keep it from flying out and that goes right there and if I show you the underside there's a kind of a, a, a spot in here where this spring goes I'll show you what it looks like here like this so that's where that spring goes when it's on the underside and you know with that I think we're pretty darn close I think I'll reassemble and show it to you and we'll see if it can uh, work regularly all right, I'm going to think we're going to call that D for done. We've got everything sorted out on it. We even put a sight on it there. I made that out of a 
brass washer. But at this point, it should cock and fire just fine. There we go. Good. Handles are back on. So I think we've we've uh, achieved what we are looking for. Barrel spins nicely now. Or the cartridge, I say. So. Thanks for watching, and uh, please like and subscribe down below, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye!